The goal of this video is to create a baseline understanding of what reference frames are. From this, we'll be able to build up to more complex topics like rotation matrices, Euler angles, and quaternions, but it is essential to have a fundamental and intuitive understanding of what reference frames are in order to get there. What this animation is showing is an example of one inertial and three rotating frames. So if you focus solely on the red frame, you can see that it's doing a pure rotation about the x-axis. Well, that means that this x-axis is still, and then the y and z axes are rotating about it. The green is rotating around the y-axis, and the blue is rotating around the z. So another example of reference frames are these two spacecraft orbiting an asteroid. The black arrows represent an inertial frame centered at the center of the asteroid, and the two spacecraft body fixed reference frames are rotating as they move around the asteroid, perturbed by solar radiation pressure. Similarly, this is an example of a satellite constellation around Earth, and I'll have a link in the description to this video if you want to check these out if you haven't already. This is an introduction to orbital mechanics video that I have. So the third video in this video series, and in this one I'm going to be going over reference frames. So we start with a reference frame definition, which is not a very formal definition, but it's the way that I like to think about it for 3D space reference frames, which is a set of three orthogonal vectors that describe points in 3D space relative to their orientation. So what this means is that three orthogonal vectors means they are all perpendicular to each other in 3D space and describe points in 3D space, so with coordinates relative to their x, y, z vectors relative to their orientation, where their x, y, z is. Now there are inertial and non-inertial reference frames. So an example of an inertial frame, which is one that does not move, it does not accelerate, is an Earth-centered inertial frame, which is shown in this background image as the black, as the black arrows where they have just the X, Y, Z of the Earth's center inertial frame. And some non-inertial frames are the frames that are attached to each one of these little spacecraft, which are rotating as they move around the Earth. So we'll start with the definition of an inertial reference frame is a non-accelerating frame of reference where it cannot be accelerating, but it can have a constant velocity. And this also includes rotational because if the frame is rotating with a constant it's rotating angularly, but has a translational constant velocity that's still not inertial. So I want to show an example here of how strict you have to be when you're defining an inertial frame. And this is from NASA, and I'll have a link in the description to this document because it's a really great document if you want to learn more about how to define reference frames, not just inertial. So this is a J2000 or EME2000 reference frame where the x-axis is defined as the intersection of equatorial and the ecliptic planes of the Earth, which is called the vernal equinox. So the equatorial is a, is a plane that is the equatorial plane, so the equator of the Earth. And the ecliptic plane is the plane of the Earth's orbit around the sun. And that's off by 23.4 degrees, which is why we have seasons. And the x-axis of this inertial frame is defined at that point of the intersection, but at a very specific time, which is 2000. January 1st, 12 o'clock, TDB, where TDB stands for Barycentric Barry Dynamical Time, which the acronym is that because it comes from French. Um, but so you have to see with the, the definition here of what TDB is, you have to be extremely specific on how to define a truly inertial frame. So we get to non-inertial frames. So one example is just anything that's rotating or accelerating. So one example of this is the Earth-centered Earth fixed frame, which is basically just like the J2000 frame equatorial, but it's rotating with the Earth. So every day it makes one 360 degree rotation as the Earth rotates. So it's fixed to the, it's fixed to the Earth. And an example of where you would use this is to make ground tracks. Now, I'll have a video in the description where I go over. I have a few videos on ground tracks. But basically, you have to take into account the rotation of the Earth if you want to know where a satellite is going to be overhead with respect to certain landmarks, say a city. And there's other body frames that you can use. So obviously, these are useful for spacecraft, rockets, robotics. So say you have a robot with an arm, you have multiple reference frames within that arm because you have separate joints. And again, from the same document that I'll have linked in the description from NASA, just an example of you can have many reference frames just on one body. Where in this example, you have a spacecraft frame that's usually centered around the, or centered at the center of mass of the body, but you have a camera frame, high gain antenna frame, you can just have as many frames as you need in order to be able to you can do all the analysis that you need to do. So applications of these, like I said, are rotation matrices, just basically convert from one frame to another, or to actually just rotate a vector. 
you can have Euler angles as well, which actually one of the things that's interesting is that that I didn't know for a while is that the Keplerian orbital elements, the right ascension, the inclination, the argument of periaps are actually a 313 Euler angle sequence, which I'll make videos on about because it's actually very interesting. You can do quaternions, and then also this is going to be applicable to the series I'm doing on spacecraft attitude control. So I'm going to be focusing on spacecraft, but then a lot of these concepts also apply to anything that you're doing attitude control for, like a spacecraft or other, or like an aircraft and other robotics. So that's it for this video. Uh, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and comment if you like the video in order to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And I'm going to be building on this specific series by going through rotation matrices, principal axis rotations, and once you get those two down, you can understand what Euler angles are, and then I'm going to go into quaternions, and then also in the attitude control series, and then I'm going to show how to do everything in Python. So that's what I'm kind of thinking of for this series. So yeah, that's it for this video. Let me know uh, what you think in the comments, and thank you for watching.